Skip, how do you explain Harden's performance? Shannon Sharp. Enjoy. <laughs> This was the biggest superstar meltdown we have witnessed since LeBron James in the 2011 NBA Finals. No Kawhi Leonard, no Tony Parker, both of whom were NBA Finals MVPs. And as I tweeted just before the game, all the pressure last night was on the home team to hold serve with no Kawhi and get it back to San Antonio for game seven. And right on cue, James Harden unraveled under that pressure. Couldn't even take a shot for the first quarter and a half. And the truth is, it was pretty predictable because James Harden has always had some LeBron in him. When the lights are brightest and the lights are hottest and the stakes are highest, he tends to melt or shrink under that pressure. I don't even call it choking in James Harden's case because <laughs> choking is what happens when you miss a last second shot. Right. This is big picture. This is disappearing, shrinking, melting, getting smaller and smaller. He was 6'5 last night when the game started and he was playing 5'11 when the game ended. And I chuckle at all the people who say, this was inexplicably shocking. No, it wasn't. It was a continuation of game five, the Tuesday night game, when down the stretch, fourth quarter, no Kawhi Leonard. What happened? James Harden disappeared. My Spurs went six big minutes of the fourth quarter. Couldn't score a basket. Couldn't score a point. Went the first four minutes of overtime. Couldn't score a point. And what happened? James Harden didn't happen because he couldn't score either. In overtime, he got blanked missed all three of his threes, and had three huge game-turning, game-saving for my Spurs turnovers. Right. And to me, it, this has been the history of James Harden, and people can't see the history because they get blinded by the beard. I don't fear the beard when the stakes are highest because the beard w will shrink when the stakes are highest and the lights are brightest because remember his first finals? only finals against LeBron, the first yeah. breakthrough in Miami, that would be 2012. 2012. Yep. Remember what happened? The Thunder go to Miami. This, this format was 2-3-2 two, two then, but they go to Miami one game all. And what happened in game three and game four? James Harden did not happen. He shot two for 10, 0 for four from three, and the next game two for 10, one for five from three. And for those three games in Miami, in which the Heat obviously closed out the Thunder, James Harden shot 9 for 31 from the floor. That's 29%. And 4 for 17 from 3, which is 24%. Mm -hmm. But that got overshadowed and overlooked because in the end, it was all about LeBron finally broke through and won his first ring and that LeBron owned Kevin Durant, right? Th those are the two superstars yep. in that final. But if you look at the conference finals in 2015 against a Golden State team that I thought was sort of 50-50 at that point against Houston because they weren't yet the Warriors that we know and love now or sometimes love. And Golden St uh, Houston had a chance game two at Golden State to win it in the end. Can we see that? James Harden has the ball. He's dribbling. They're down one. He's going to get his last shot, and he dribbles right into Steph and right through Clay, and he loses the basketball. Whoa, he lost the basketball. And then he's so upset, he, we'll see it in just a second, lost the basketball. But anyway, he walks off the floor and knocks down a big curtain partition because he was so upset. There he goes. Whoops. Anyway, that, okay, so that was just one of those games. Then he goes on. Game three of that series, he shoots three for 16, one for five from three. Game five of that series, he goes two for 11 with an NBA record 12 turnovers. Who remembers? Everybody should remember that because the 12 turnovers broke his own playoff record of 2013 when he was Houston versus Oklahoma City mm -hmm. of 10 turnovers. So you've got disaster upon disaster upon disaster. And in the end, I, what, why should I think anything else would happen last night? It was just a continuation of game five because I told you after game one, the blowout in San Antonio of mm -hmm. my Spurs, I said, my Spurs beat them the last three times they played them. They've always done very well against James Harden. And Houston is a funky team because they're really James Harden or bust. They have one big star. It's James Harden. Mm -hmm. He was your MVP candidate all year long. Mm -hmm. And when he is cooking, yep. they are cooking because they can just start nailing threes. But they feed off his energy and his distributing and, and also getting to the rim. Yeah, playmaking. And if he doesn't early on, they just shrink like he does, and all of a sudden, they look like 
a mediocre basketball team right on cue, and it was happily predictable for my Spurs. Thank you very much. Well, I said this, Skip, and I, I picked the, uh, the Rockets, but I said if they're not careful, San Antonio will beat them. And I said, if you, you know, you respect, if you underestimate no one, you respect everyone, you won't have a problem. They looked at it and they saw that Kawhi wasn't playing. Oh, we got this. Yep. And I keep telling you. <clears throat> now, one or two things might be true and both might be true. Either Kawhi, the best player in the NBA, does not play in San Antonio or the Western Conference isn't as strong as people say it is. One, two, or all, both. Mm. Both. Mm. Not THFL, both. Skip, this is, re this is a bigger meltdown than what LeBron did for the simple fact. Now, if they'd have had, Dirk would have been out and LeBron melted down. We could have we said, okay, but Skip, with Kawhi Leonard out, a guy that's in the MVP discussion, and whether you think he's the best player, the second best, he is a top five player in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Not only was he out this game, he was out all of overtime and missed about five minutes of the fourth quarter. And if James Harden, if you're that guy, you must seal that deal. Skip, he was off for the last two games. James Harden in the last two games had more turnovers himself than the Spurs had as a team in games five and six. And when you do that, you don't even give yourself an opportunity to get a foul. You don't even give yourself an opportunity to get the ball up to a, a, a attempt to get a ball in the basket. Skip, you said he couldn't. I wrote this down. You said he couldn't attempt. Was it that he couldn't or he didn't uh, try to? He I've never seen anything like this, Skip. No. Nope. It reminded me, if I didn't know better, you remember when Kobe, everybody said Kobe's a ball hog and he p shoots too much and he tried to prove a point in Phoenix and he wouldn't take a shot, he was just passing it. It almost looked like that. And I'm like, well, what, James, what's going on? This is not... He wasn't pouting, though. He was just no, shrinking. Like, I, like yeah. I'm saying, you, yeah. exactly. This was not a moment where I'm going to show you, you want me to pass the ball, I'm going to pass it to show you what they mm -hmm. can't do. But Skip, 95, 97% of this blame goes to James Harden because Skip, and make it worse. He didn't foul out the entire year. He fouled out of this game. How do you foul out on 11 attempts? You've, You're not being aggressive. You, you've unraveled. You have. Psychologically, emotionally, you've just unraveled. You've come apart because the pressure was all on, really, it was just on James last Correct. night, right? Yes. I mean, who, who thought that, that the Spurs should have any chance in that game? Right. And here's why it's even more shameful. If you told me sitting here 24 hours ago that my Spurs would shoot five for 22 from the three-point line last night, mm -hmm. think about that, five for 22, mm -hmm. I would have said Rockets by 20 or 25. Right. Really? This is shameful because they, they had to play. This is Pop getting forced to play a Jonathan Simmons, just because Tony Parker was out and then mm -hmm. Kawhi was out. Jonathan Simmons once had to pay $150 to try out for the Spurs D-League team, the Austin Toros. That's how bad it was for Jonathan Simmons. That's where he came from. Right. And DeJounte Murray, who's been in the doghouse all year, Pop doesn't like to play rookies. He had no choice. He threw him in. Lo and behold, DeJounte doesn't fear the beard or fear the moment, right? Off the bench, 11 points, 10 rebounds. rebounds and Four five guards. Assists for five assists. He's long. He's athletic. can't shoot threes, but no. he can shoot twos. And he, can, he, he gets a little lost on defense, but he can rebound. And all of a sudden, the kid who didn't play all year is looking like a star in this game. And all of a sudden, because they were forced to, they had no choice. They had to tell LaMarcus before the game, we know it was Kawhi's team all year, but now you got the greenest light you've had since last year. Just shoot it. Right. As soon as they hit your hands, just, just let it go and don't worry about it because we're probably going to lose anyway. That's sort of the mentality. Yeah. Just let it go. Let it fly. And he, you saw what happened. He was ultra aggressive. Hey. He was, he was, he was, Skip, that was the old, that was the, the old, old LaMarcus. Oh, that was LaMarcus from Portland.